Talking Live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America, bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome everyone into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. And everyone, welcome into the program. I hope that you are having a great week and you are ready for today's program because today we have Nathan Evans. If you haven't heard of him, where have you been all of our lives? He is with, of course, popzara.com and they do a little bit of everything. You know, there's some overlap with uh, with Computer America, but I got to say the uh, you know, the nice folks over there do an incredible job covering everything from video games, tech reviews, uh, story, uh, story, stories in paper, uh, book, book reviews, uh, video, uh, you know, videos and streaming and so on and so forth. Um, just went on their site. They have uh, an appliance review. That's a new category. So there you go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to find out more, popzara.com will have that in the show notes. And of course, computeramerica.com will have everything that we talk about with our guest today. And our guest, of course, Nathan Evans, uh, Managing Editor of Pop Zara. And Nathan, welcome back onto the program. How you been? Hey, Ben. How's it going? How's everybody? This is a beautiful weekend. What's Nothing bad can happen when the, <laughs> when the weekend is so nice like this. Yeah, that's... Uh, I've had so many tech issues that nothing can <laughs> go wrong because everything has... Although, I, I will tell a little personal story um, real quick that Nathan... Last mm. night, and and I apologize if I seem a little all, all over the place, uh, my wife and I were going to bed, and uh, our new dog, uh, we just got a new puppy about uh, last Friday, so, you know, we're still trying to, uh, you know, assimilate the new dog. Uh, anyways, it was, it, was, it was running around going crazy uh, at like 1.30 at night, I'm like, what the heck? Uh, and it's very dark, and I see something moving in front of it, and I was like, what the heck? And I go turn on the light. Nathan, somehow, some way, a flying squirrel got into the house, and the dog was chasing it. Um, yeah, I don't know how a flying squirrel got in the house, you, but I, I am not good with small rodents. I'm not good with snakes. Huh. I'm not good with things that are much smaller than me, and I obviously can outpower them, but they freak me out, and I am... I am I, like, you know those old cartoons where in, like, Tom and Jerry, it's like, oh, my God, a mouse, and, you know, they stand up on the chair and kind of, you know, do the dance? Uh, that's what I did. Uh, very ineffective. Very, very ineffective. And, uh, yep, yeah. yeah, spent a good hour trying to figure out how to get a flying squirrel out of your room. So <laughs> Well, listen, your, your new doggo probably thought uh, he or she won the lottery. Like, this yeah. is great. New house, new flying squirrel. Yeah, we, 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 we had to pull the dog away and, you know, kind of scoop it up into a bucket and put a piece of cardboard on top and, you know, throw it out. But, uh, yeah, that was fun at one thirty at night when you're trying to go to bed. So, Nathan, how have you been? How, how, how's <laughs> Look, your month been? I'll say this. You remember what Mel Brooks said about this, right, about comedy and tragedy? What's that? You know, he says, you know, he says, you know tragedy is when I cut my finger, but comedy is when you walk into a manhole and die. Yes. So, just... Remember, that story you just said, that agonizing, horrible experience for you is hilarious to everyone else listening and lovable. I I, I, I hope that everyone got a little bit better over Friday because of that. Because uh, last night, um, I should not scream higher pitch than my wife, but I did. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, all that's done. Uh, we've been dealing with some tech uh, some tech issues here at Computer America, which we're just figuring out. And overall, though, we're we're back. We're happy. Everything's going well. And uh, Nathan, if you would like to tell the nice folks about over popzara.com, sure. how how have things been there? Uh, pretty steady, you know, ready, steady. Um, doing some background updates, some um, you know, database pushing, and all that, all that stuff that no one needs to know about. But I'll just say this: I want to commiserate with you on the PC problems because I want to say something. If you talk to PC people, PC people are kind of like mathematicians and, and, and um, what do you call it, theoretical phys uh, physicists. Mm -hmm. Like, if you meet a clean 
physicists, don't trust them. <laughs> if you meet a mathematician that's not dirty and, and kind of grimy, don't trust them. And if you meet a PC person who's not constantly screwing up their system, don't trust them. Because stability is for plebs. Mm-hmm. You know this. It's like as soon as you get your computer built, as soon as you build it, as everything can be perfect, everything's fantastic. You click on the desktop. Oh my God, everything's working. What can I screw up? Who like, who knew Notepad I- would cause so many issues? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, I did not put this on the stories for this, but I think uh, Microsoft made it official. They are sunsetting Word. Uh, what is it? Word Perfect? No, not Word Perfect. Um, um, uh, WordPad. Yeah, WordPad. It's finally going the way of the dodo. But then again, Microsoft does sunset things and they bring them back. Like they, they resurrect them sometimes. Yeah, like uh, Paint, right? And they like Paint like Plus paint. or whatever. Yeah, because they're going to monetize Paint. <laughs> so they're going to actually charge for like AI tokens to use Paint. If if people are out there like really interested in something that does the same functionality, but it's very good um, and it's, you know, kind of open source, all that good stuff. Notepad++ is actually a very good replacement well, for a very simple um you know just text document so i'll say you know what's funny um notepad is actually like the divining line between a lot of people who use pc and macs right mm-hmm. because p- every pc comes with notepad notepad is like a a cleanser a cleanser it's yeah like you you pop stuff in notepad it's clean you can plop it everywhere else it's actually a very useful program it's like blanching fish but with Macs, max don't have that so max need their own what is it text edit on Max, yeah, something like and that. And it has a lot of has a lot of hypertext and everything, and it's not quite as clean as Notepad. And I get scared every day when Microsoft tinkers with Notepad because I don't want Notepad to be complicated. I don't need RGB lights. I don't need spell check. I want that crap just plain Jane. Just give mm-hmm. me my plain text. Like the, it's the closest thing you have to a typewriter. Yeah, it, it's but, it's. Yeah. Uh, if only George R. R. Martin actually upgraded from the Commodore and decided mm-hmm. to use Notepad, mm-hmm. uh, we might actually have a fifth book. Uh, but alas, we don't. So, <laughs> uh, so everyone out there, let's uh, let's just go ahead and uh, say that you know, again, Popzar, lots of different articles. See that you have mm-hmm. lots of coverage. Um, I do like that you covered uh, the latest Final Fantasy game, which uh, you know, um, I don't. I, and a fan, I, I, mm-hmm. and, and an oscillating fan. You won't find and an oscillating fan, yes. It's um, yeah. it's a lot of good stuff. So check that out there. You reviewed Damsel? Okay, real quick. I got to click on this. I didn't review it. One of my yes. editors did. <laughs> and like and got an A. Hey, look. I, I I agree with your editor. That's nice. Or your yeah. reviewer. That's good. She, um, Susanna, she also reviewed the new Ghostbusters film and didn't like that either. Um so she's on her way. <laughs> she she is uh, she's the right kind of uh, uh, cynic, and that is the uh, the ones that agree with me. So, it, the damsel was such a meh meh. Uh, I, I and I know Nathan, you've talked <laughs> about the the economics of Netflix. Netflix <laughs> amazes me at how much they can just throw garbage at did, the wall. Did you watch? Did you watch it on Netflix? I did. I did. Then you then you justified the whatever budget they gave. Like they don't care if you like it. I I know, but care. but like I'm I'm sure you've heard like the thing about you know throwing spaghetti at the wall, see what sticks, blah blah blah. They are mm-hmm. throwing spaghetti at a Teflon wall, and 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 it's not even spaghetti. It's something that smells fouler than spaghetti. Like they are impervious to doing quality. I don't know what Netflix well, is doing. No, that's not true. Like they do make good stuff. The problem is is that they don't distinguish something being good or bad. Like the way humans do, because they see it in variables. They, they, it, like someone out there is like a mix of like Tom Cruise and Minority Report mm-hmm. versus like Keanu Reeves in The Matrix. Like someone is, a, and all they're doing is they're praying to the algorithm and they're looking at it. It's like, look at this. I have so many followers. I have, you know, I, I have so many minutes that people have watched my thing. I, they don't calculate success in, in scores or anything because there's no metric for that. They yeah. already have your money. Right? They already got your money. They don't need your money. They already have it. So what they say is like, oh, this. This is a billion minutes. Like somebody, I don't they, know. they never say how many. They never say how many people watched it, or yeah, how many people. The, you know, the, they always it. say that everything is like the is the most watched, or this is the most watched, or you know, like they yeah. they, they throw out like very vague metrics, but they never well, say numbers. Well, you know that uh, a lot of times it's just it's just autoplay. Like like before you finish watching something, something else will start queuing up and playing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, gasp, it's whatever the popular thing is. So it's basically confirmation confirmation yeah. bias and so i don't know how realistic it is but i will say this mm-hmm. we'll say this uh 
what's her name? Bobby Mill Brown? Yeah. The one who's in the thing. She's from Stranger Things. And I did I actually did see the new Ghostbusters movie. And it's such a striking contrast. Because once you get these Netflix kids outside of Netflix where they have to compete for money, they don't do so hot. And the kid in there, I forget his name, Wolf Wolfgang Wolfie, the one with the hair. He's he was in like five thousand movies for the last five years. Because let's put him in everything. Yeah. Let's put him in straight. And he's in Ghostbusters. He's one of the Ghostbusters kids. Like he has zero presence outside of Netflix. Like you put him in a competitive thing against real actors that actually want money to be in a movie, like Paul Rudd. Mm-hmm. Like you know people who won't do streaming films, right? Right. Fades into the background. Like it's the algorithm does not help some of these actors, and I I. I'm I'm worried about that a little bit actually. Uh, uh, I don't know. It, it's uh, uh, industry's changing, and let's face it. I think that there were a lot of contract negotiations uh, last year about AI and stuff like that, and everything you just said just kind of further points to at some point some studio, and that some studio is undoubtedly going to be Netflix, is going to say, yeah. "Don't care." AI is going to write our movies, and we're going to use AI to do X, Y, Z, and, you know, the garbage that they that they pump out, they don't care, and they're going to jump on it. So, they might have, mean, with, the, with the negotiations, they might have, like, delayed AI in movies, but it's not going to stop it. I, I actually think AI has been making movies. Like, like you, you, they get caught once in a while. What was that thing that just came out? Um, some horror movie about an exorcism admitted like they had to like be guilted into into saying that they actually used ai to create it disney gets caught all the time look i'll just say this ben mm. ai in movies is like milli vanilli remember them mm. like girl girl you know it's true blame it on the rain <laughs> you, are you familiar with, are you familiar I, I, with- I, I i've heard the name i uh milli vanilli oh, man. milli vanilli yeah like trust me like they were superstars they were had number one hits they won a grammy for best right. new artist yes they were, they were fake fake yes and when it came out they had you know one of them committed suicide there was a documentary last year either last year or this year but no millie vanelli like people say oh my god how did this happen it happens all the time we just found out about it so you're telling me that disney disney is not using ai to do this stuff are you kidding of course they are they just get caught with it yeah and and it will only uh i i've heard rumors uh that there's chat gpt5 will be out this summer so well, it's 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 getting you saw what happened mm-hmm. you saw what happened with uh tyler perry right uh yeah he closed down his, his uh georgia studio because they didn't have enough protections dollars. yeah no 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 800 million dollar investment he he stopped it because he saw one of the new ai models and what it could do on the fly and yeah. he said oh my god this is going to make us irrelevant because why would you hire like if you go to any um super comic book blockbuster it's like 50 minutes of credits just of people who did cg right like studios around the world like there are more people working on horrible comic book cg than there are like in certain like countries mm-hmm. small countries and or you can get this ai uh, and forgive me i don't pay attention to ai enough to me it's all crap but <laughs> Some of the, um, you can look it up if you type in Tyler Perry, but some of the AI uh, symbols it's doing on the fly are extraordinary. Like they look better than anything that Hollywood's producing. They look better than any video game. And no human is really doing this. So if it's this good now, if it's this good now, it's going to be a billion times better when you get a talented artist yeah making it happen it, it, it's uh right now ai is good with like the small stuff like it's not good with the fine details but eventually hey it will figure that one out as well which by the way and this is a complete aside you know where ai really shines um and destroying I, humans uh, well yeah i i have uh i've been using it whenever i play uh rim world and in rim world mm-hmm. it, it will it, it's like a it's like a markov chain that will you know kind of tell you a story uh and it generates random gobbledygook you know as like uh, art pieces and stuff like that plugging in that random stuff into an ai image generator is actually a lot of fun it adds some depth to the game because it you know it it creates some funky stuff and it's uh i don't know it's that's gonna be said but let's talk about ai let's go ahead and jump into our first discussion actually i didn't need that because it's right here uh new york city will test ai gun detectors 
on mm-hmm. the subway. And uh, we all know that New York City subways have been um, uh, contentious at times. And I think uh, not too long ago they called out like the National Guard uh, to man, you know, the New York City uh, subway that, yeah. stations. And of course they have cops there like every two feet. Um, yeah. So with all that being said, they're trying, they're going to try everything that they can. And one of them is AI gun detectors. Now, Nathan, you included the story. I can, I mean, obviously it's tech related. Uh, it's, you know, AI, so it's current events. Uh, what jumped out at you about this? Uh, the stupidity of it. Right. Um, because if you actually look into the story a little bit, um, first of all, and I, I have lots of friends from New York. I have some friends from New York City. It's a wonderful city. Um, I would be cautious going there at certain times, but I'm not scared. I mean, I'm a big boy. But, you know, this is the city has gotten like unprecedented, unprecedented criticism for failing to appropriately address the violence that's going on in like certain areas, specifically the subway systems. Like, mm-hmm. like you, you've, we've literally had headlines of, of, you know, people having to rise to the occasion to help other people and then getting, you know, arrested for helping. You know, they'd rather they'd rather you let someone get stabbed than help them. You will get in trouble. And and conversely, we've also seen not to be political, but we've also seen people who commit these crimes not get charged. So it's it's literally a melting pot of stupidity. And so you see reactions like let's get the armed guard down there. Let's let's not let's not pe- get people who do turnstiles. So let's put AI there. Now, if you look into the story uh, t- a little bit, um, goodness gracious, what's the name of the, the software part- they're using? It's partnering with uh, a company called Evolve. Uh, with, Evolve. So this is Evolve with no E, and it looks like they use not only metal detectors, but then they use cameras to uh, or. I'm sorry, they look like metal detectors, so mm-hmm. I think everyone should be very familiar with them, but I think they're scanners that then look for, um, you know, bulges and clothes, and it looks for different things, so it's not just like a metal detector, you know, anyone can go through with their bags and shoes on and all that good stuff, but it claims it can, you know, catch guns on the fly? Well, again... AI, what does AI really mean? It, it's looking at, it, is it scanning things? Is it, is it scanning probabilities? Is it looking for like specific um, signs that there might be a weapon or whatnot? But it, it again, this is, this is not happening in a bubble. You're seeing uh, crime prevention all around the country start using these sort of invasive machines and invasive technologies. I know in Chicago, um, the new mayor uh, made, a, made a big stinker out of getting rid of some gun detection thing where uh, the software would be used to not predict so much, but to um, detect mm-hmm. gunshots and alert police before there was 9-11, nine one one calls, excuse mm-hmm. me. But when you have things like this, you know, there's, again, I got to be careful what I'm saying here, because if, if, the, if the software and the technology is used in service of protecting the, the public, um, the efficacy rate is never going to be 100%. You're never going to have 100% right. usability. Sort of like you have facial detections on, you know, stadiums and police. And you hear all the time, oh, it's got false flag, false flag, false flag. <laughs> People have gone to jail over yeah. that facial detection. The the, yeah. the the one that I always point to, and, and it's been a few years, I probably need to find a, another example. Uh, there was one with London, uh, which, for those who don't know, London has the most security cameras of anywhere on Earth. CCTV? Uh, yeah, and, and they, uh, they had a facial recognition software running on all the video surveillance equipment. And it had a false positive rate of like ninety nine percent. Yeah. Um. And, and like that number is not exaggerating. Like you would be better if you just pointed at a screen and went, "I think I know that guy." You'd be more well, right than this, you know, kind way, of a- algorithm. Um. And I apologize. The software in Chicago was called Shot Spotter. Ah. That's what I was thinking of. And you know, and again, it had its efficacy rate was like. 10 15 percent but again that's 10 15 percent of detecting actual gunshots like there could be car backfires it's no different to what apple watch does you know apple watch has um i think a fall, pre- uh, yeah, fall yeah, predictor or yeah fall detection but, yeah but but it could be set off going on certain <laughs> it could be set off going on like um certain carnival rides mm-hmm. but again it's but it's something though it's like you could see the you could see maybe the false positives would outweigh the the negative positives over there because it's in service to something good right yeah, it's but when it comes to this sort of thing, to criminalizing, it's they're they're searching for solutions to problems that could be solved if they actually just did their job, hmm. and they are going they are bending over backwards every which way but loose. Sorry, Clint Eastwood, um, to 
to not address the actual problems. Oh, we'll get AI to do it because AI is a hot buzzword. Let's invest AI. And then if you get false positives, they're going to use that for exoneration on, 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 you know, on actual criminal cases. I just, I'm watching with, you know, that gif with the guy with the popcorn, I'm just sitting yeah. back yeah, and just saying, wow, New York, you are entertaining as, you know, as the kids say, AF, mm -hmm. but you know, but it's just, I don't know. It's like, Mm, it feels I, feels wrong, doesn't I, it? I I think and and like this is already kind of already going on with um, there's like detectors that can detect you know if you've like uh, uh, if you've been around explosives if you go through a metal detector. Uh, honestly, Nathan, like just seeing the videos and just assuming that they're a bit faster than traditional metal detectors. Uh, I'm all for it because I, I I've always kind of thought and i would never hurt anyone i'm a very nice person i promise um one of the biggest congregations of people is at a security checkpoint so i feel like for everyone's not just convenience but for everyone's safety finding something that is better uh and faster is paramount you know before someone gets hurt in yeah, a security exactly. checkpoint line uh, now is this better faster and safer Probably not. Um, it has nice buzzwords, like you said, and there's a lot of false positives. And, you know, Nathan, this does what so much security does already, which is kind of the theater of it. It's to make you think you're safe. And that's just going to make you know, that that has value in itself. But it's not perfect. And I don't think it well, will be for a long time. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, perfection is not shouldn't be the goal, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what should what again, what we should what we what we should be striving for is that these tools, whether AI, cameras, whatever, they should be what they are. They're tools. They should aid good old fashioned police work. And if you, if you have something that um, can narrow down a suspect pool or can find a missing baby or can, you know, or can uh, nab a criminal who might be running through the crowd. I mean, everybody who watched 1980s movies, if the bad guy gets into a crowd in a subway, he's gone. You, he's gone because that's the rules. Like I'm blending in with the subway. Fooled you, bad guy. You know, that's, but if we could, if we could work on that, that would be fine. That would be, that would be good. But again, um, not to jump the, the gun here, but I sent you another story about New York City using AI. That is hilarious. Yeah, let, let's, mind. let's go ahead and uh, move yeah. over to New York City talking about um, <laughs> AI as well. And it's a chatbot tells businesses to break the law, which before you had to pay a lawyer $200 an hour to do the same thing. So yeah. technology really is just advancing so fast. Feature, feature not a bug. But um, yeah, so I mean, how do I say this without sounding fun? Um, New York decided, let's, hey, let's put a chatbot to help New York citizens uh, to do this. It turns out, yeah, probably not a good idea. So what happened? It, it, it looks like, uh, let's see, so the byline for this article is the Microsoft-powered bot, so it's not even like one that was created on the fly, it's Microsoft's, no, no. says yeah. bosses can take workers' tips and that landlords can discriminate based on source of income. Uh, two things that, mm -hmm. while, you know, are expressly forbidden in the law, um, are probably done on a regular well, basis. Um, there was... Yeah. Did you see that story about the Venezuelan guy who was going on TikTok and this guy was a punchable Was face, it the one telling people how to guy? how to uh squat or squat, yeah. yeah. Squatters. And, and yeah. I say to myself and I, I say to myself, I'm of two minds here. I'm I'm more libertarian than anything else. Libertarian is just code word for I don't get involved. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Leave me be. It's Less not is a better. Thing. Is libertarian yet, right? Yeah, exactly. It, I'm not a libertarian like politically. I'm a libertarian like active wise. Like mm -hmm. libertarians never get up and do anything. No, no group of libertarians ever said, "Hey, let's get up and march." Nah, I'm good. <laughs> but no. But you see, you see all these cases of TikTok and and the big code word now, and I I do believe it's a code word is squatter. You see stories about squatters all over the place. Squatters. It's the new hotness, right? Let's let's deal with squatters. But this this douchebag was going on TikTok and instructing people how to squat people's houses in America. Mm -hmm. And his pro his problem was he was just so annoying. Like he wasn't <laughs> low key about it. He was theatrically annoying. But that, so, but that's TikTok. That that's the algorithm. That's, yeah. Well, that's the thing though. And you know, right now, right now, and and I don't want to open this bag of uh, I don't want to open this can of worms and get into it because I'm not qualified to talk about it. But you know, <laughs> there's a bill where they're trying to ban TikTok and what what. And this comes up like what? This came up four years ago. It's back now. It's banned TikTok. Um, but the, the problem is you never hear stories about like TikTok enforcing user behavior. Like you hear all the time, every time, Facebook didn't police this. 
you know, Twitter X didn't didn't fact check this yeah. misinformation. You never have you ever seen a story where people talked about TikTokers like that ever? Like I've never they, seen there uh, and and I can kind of point back to like the Tide Pod challenge and you know when they do stupid trends, but. It really does feel like okay. in 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 our news cycles that Nathan that you know it's ignored. The, the the news is so fast and up to date and daily that mm-hmm. as soon as you get a trend on TikTok, it's gone within twenty four hours before well, people can report on it. But people have actually died mimicking TikTok morons more than like cigarettes, and this is not like this is not a one time thing. But you you don't hear oh TikTok is is providing misinformation. Da, da, da. You never hear it. it's only Twitter. It's only Facebook. It's never to, it's never TikTok. Don't you know? Question. But the, the, what I'm saying though is, um, you know, you, you have something like this. You have these people like trying to to sort of thwart rules and regulations. And I and I say to myself with AI, these. I wonder if AI is like this is the model they're feeding off of, like these idiots, because it happens so much. It happens so all, much. All of it is, and the more, and and, and I really do feel like. Chatbots are like the masters of improv comedy, where you don't say no, you say yes and. Uh, that's where chatbots, and honestly, you could get chatbots to say anything. That is their biggest flaw. I, I, I think I've said it on the show with you before. The chatbots don't have convictions. If I said, Nathan, you have three arms, you are going to fight me, you know, forever. I assume that you do not have three arms, um, and 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 it's like a chatbot though will eventually, with enough poking, with enough prodding, with enough obtuse roundabout ways of saying chatbot, you know Nathan has three arms. The chatbot will go, all right, I'll look up some three arm shirts for Nathan because he has three arms. Like the chatbot doesn't have conviction, and well, that's where these stories kind of come from. Were we talking a couple months ago about there's these groups like vigilantes that are going to sort of poison the AI, yeah. you know, data set pool? But here's my thing: I, I, that's that's this is all speculative science, maybe someday nonfiction. But my biggest thing is that the people that are rushing to put this stuff in don't understand what the technology is, don't understand why it, it is, don't understand how to use it. It's the new thing: AI good, chatbot good do 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 mm-hmm. and this happens all the time every time every time it rolls out then we are not ready for ai society is not ready for it like the people who make it don't even know how to use it no offense last month you and i talked about black nazis mm-hmm. right yeah and, uh, yeah the, the, the image generators which uh yeah. have, have they brought back generating people yet oh, on there there's talk about gemini becoming a standard for ios like they are hmm. forging full steam ahead and you know what that is that is just that is someone going you know what let's not per- let's not let perfect be the enemy of the good no yeah <laughs> so- uh, there I, I i mean saying that this technology shouldn't come about nathan like it, it really does feel like the uh, the the advent of like let's say the internet, you know, saying people shouldn't have access to to that much information or people shouldn't uh, be able to talk to that many people. Like it really does feel like we're at the beginning of uh, of a really you know new technology, and I'm Not sure people age. are so sick of this conversation about you know kind of what are the implications of AI, but we all are going to have to deal well, with it at some point. So I don't know. It, there, there, there's no putting it back in the box. For sure. Here, here's how I feel. Here's how I feel about it. When I was a little kid, right, the best gift I ever got for my birthday was back in you know a long time ago in the Stone Age. But when I was a little kid, the, I wanted this electric typewriter more than I ever wanted anything mm-hmm. before. Right? Uh, we were poor. I had a little manual typewriter I pulled out of the trash. I learned to clean it up. I'm I'm very young. I'm, I'll just say that I'm pretty precocious for a kid. I could clean a typewriter up. <laughs> but that damn thing weighed like 20 pounds. And when you're like in fifth uh, second grade, 20 pounds is a lot. Yeah. And you got to get ribbons. Got, so I wanted this electric. Tar- it used it was from AT and T. Used cartridges. You put the paper in. Fancy. And I yeah, it was fancy. Two hundred dollars. It's a fortune. And they had an upgraded model. It was the word processor with a little LCD screen with mm-hmm. um, floppy disk. That was three hundred. So screw that. This might as well be, you know, <laughs> Cybertruck. But anyway, w- my mom got it for me, and she saved up. And I just typed the hell out of this thing. I wrote story after story after story. I loved my typewriter. I was not bound by anything. And here's the thing. Those of us 
that have grown up in a certain age have a very different concept of what censorship is. Like, we think censorship is cartoons from the 50s. We think censorship is Mark Twain. You know, we don't... We, we were championing the idea that censorship was a bad thing, that people should need to learn to have freedom of expression. The internet comes, right? Mm-hmm. It's not paper, it's not keys, it's not physical. It, now it's anonymous. You can yeah. do anything you want. You can do anything you want. The concepts of censorship have changed to the point where many, many people who would have been on the, on the forefront of fighting censorship and thinking that more information always outbeats better. 1984 was not a handbook. <laughs> a guidance book. It was a cautionary tale of what happens when people don't understand. So, because you know why? No one typed when I was a kid, Ben. No one knew how to do a typewriter unless you were a woman. Yeah. And that was a girly that's, thing. That's, no man typed. That's true. Right? Yeah. And and nowadays, like nowadays, anybody can go on their keyboard, or on their phone, or their whatever, and type in whatever you you know. And we we get terms like misinformation. We get terms like conspiracy theory. We get uh, as though those are equating to like terrorist actions, like someone saying the earth is flat is now just as dangerous as, you know, the anarchist handbook. And that's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. We're not talking about child pornography. We are not talking about assassination threats. Like everybody uses the term. What's the term? Um, I got death threats, death threats. If I was an author, I would love to have death threats. Are you kidding? <laughs> death threat me all day long. But no one we do not advocate death threats for anyone, just no. making that clear. But yeah, no, but, but, it, but 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 the word death threat doesn't mean what it means anymore. It just means some bozo on inter- some anonymous idiot was th- said, "I'm going to kill you." It's not like uh, someone who killed you know uh, John Lennon or tried to shoot or tried to shoot President there, Reagan. There have been, and, and and we've had experts, uh, you know, sociologists here on the show that have talked about the influence of social media and the influence of you know just all this communication and being anonymous does lower your inhibitions. You do get more aggressive. You kind of refuse to see the other person that you are engaging with as people. They're just words on a screen. There's less humanity uh, with the internet for sure. Of course there is, but you could say the same thing about sex and pornography. You could say a lot about a lot of things. It's basically goes back to the idea of skin in the game. If, if, if you don't have anything invested, if you're not invested in the thing, then you don't care about it as much. And again, when I had my typewriter of my paper, I loved it. I, I, every, everything was precious because everything, every letter I typed was valuable ink. And now don't have that anymore. Now I can write fan fiction of 50 shades of gray till my heart's content. It doesn't cost me anything. Right? There you go. In fact, I might even, I might even get paid for it. <laughs> but when it comes, but, but, the, but the, Getting back on track, what I was trying to say is that when we when we come to when we come to like what is censorable, what is this? Um, last week, I think sixty minutes had this broadcast about fact checkers and people who miss who look up misinformation, mm-hmm. and I had to say to myself, "Who put you in charge? Who made you the boss?" And but on the flip side, on the flip side, I was getting to my point. Yeah, but I can see. Like when I see TikTok, I see people eating bleach and I see people jumping out of cars and I see people doing stuff. And I realize, I realize is that maybe there should be, there's a happy medium here somewhere. There's a happy medium somewhere. And, you know, people say movies don't influence you. Movies don't affect you. Well, why do, why do people cry at Titanic if they don't affect you? Why do people want to pump up and do push ups when they see Rocky? Of course they affect you. But the, do they make you go out and want to shoot somebody or, or assassinate? Probably not. Yeah. But but the idea is when when it comes to AI, these same there are people in charge that don't seem to know what the hell they're doing. And that's the only thing that worries me. Not AI itself. I want AI right now. I want to create stuff right now. I think AI is cool as hell. Mm-hmm. I do. I think AI is the coolest thing that I've ever seen. I am salivating. Like my typewriter, Ben. <laughs> like my typewriter. I am salivating at the crap that I can create with AI. I love it. I've been waiting for this my whole life. But AI can't have roadblocks built by idiots. I've been through that stuff before. I don't want to go through it anymore. I don't. I don't, I don't know the solution, but I don't know. <laughs> there, there. The solution is uh, unfortunately very not libertarian. Is uh, yeah, I know. Uh, you need some kind of regulation, and and to me, the regulation is expose the code. To people like people should know what's going into this. Open it up. And, like and, open and, 
and there's of course going to be like you know trade secrets and and that's and so on and so forth but we're getting to a point where you can't just say oh you know the code is the code it's a big black box we put stuff into it stuff comes out we don't know what actually happens and like that worked in 2019 that can't keep working like these are going to have to start being uh, you know looked at and scrutinized and see where the data is coming from and that's that's the next step for ai for me at least wasn't wasn't that the whole purpose of open source back in the 90s like or late 80s like the gnu licenses is that we're just going to give it put it out there let you and let you create the roadmaps of the internet but let, let's let you map the entire internet but the but the trade-off is that you don't profit off this specific technology yeah, they're, they're, well, open source has more to do with the uh, availability of the source code and letting people, yeah. you know, kind of have at it, less so than not making money. Like, you you can, you know, uh, if, if I want to go to any open source project, uh, change it to, you know, Ben's open source, you know, so-and-so, and start charging people $100 a pop, that's perfectly allowed. It's just, you have to give credit, and whatever you do do they kind of recommend that you you know kind of give back to the community but if you want to right. charge for it go for it um well, you know that's your prerogative but you, but you saw what happened with java like java was supposed to be an open platform and then eventually the parent company started getting bought and then there were forks of it that weren't compatible anymore yeah and java basically got rendered irrelevant because of this you know and, and also a, a, a million security flaws but yeah yeah <laughs> well you know what's a million yeah but but the fact but the fact of the matter is is that what's you know, a million live- nathan a million is an understatement for sure yeah Look, look, one one mis- one mistake is a tragedy. A million mistakes is a statistic, you know, statistic. <laughs> yes. But what but here's the thing though. Um we live in a world where people can easily download LibreOffice. They could do it for free. Mm-hmm. They could get GIMP for free. But they choose to get Office. They choose to get Microsoft Office. Like they choose to get Photoshop. They choose to buy Windows. Like they choose to buy things because we have been conditioned and rightfully so that the our betters, the the people in charge are going to protect our data. You know, we're, they're going to protect our data. They're going to protect our security and whatnot. But I'll be honest with you. I'm going to tell you this. I am not afraid of AI at all. AI is a tool. But I am afraid that people who do not have my best interests, who want to sell me things, like, for example, Copilot, right? I look for, I can't take Copilot off Windows 11. It's all over the place. It's all over Bing. Um, I, I was actually having this friend with one of my uh, conversation with a friend the other day. Mm-hmm. Copilot is going to use AI to scan every file on your Windows PC and summarize it for you. Every document, every PDF, Word document, GIF, whatever. Well, they already did that when they made everything searchable. So now they're just going to ingest the data and make it searchable. So yeah, but yeah, they're go- that, that's yeah, going to they're gonna, like They're going to say, like, here's a PDF, of, and they're going to say, like, scenic landscape, you know, whatever. They're going to read it. That data is going to go somewhere. Like, there's a story I gave you about Microsoft and Intel partnering to put AI, you know, Copilot on your machine. That's a different issue. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is that AI as it stands right now is server-based, right? That means people say, we don't listen to, we don't listen in your phone. We just listen for the trigger words. We don't scan, you know, yeah. um, email will say, we don't scan your Gmail, but they, there's evidence they do, you know, whatever. And I think the only company that actually fought back against this in the public sphere was Apple. Yeah. Like Apple said, we're, we don't going to do this. And I, I actually had this conversation with a friend, and I am not a technophobe. I am not a Luddite by any stretch of the imagination. I'm usually a first adopter. But I'm getting to the point where I don't, it's just not something I want to have to worry about. Because mm-hmm. when I get a Windows machine, the first thing I do is I shut off timeline, I shut off activity. Yes. You can't send this, you can't send this. No, no, no. People, and they take, but, and they, but by making it, and, and there's always the 90 10 rule, yeah. when you opt, uh, when you make something opt out, 90 percent of people won't bother and 10 percent of people will well, opt out they hide and it though they they it, hide it they stretch it all over the place and then and then the other way is 90 10 where if you make it opt in 90 percent of people will not opt in and 10 percent of people will <laughs> it, it's that it's it's that same principle that microsoft has been using since like windows 8 and windows 10 um mm-hmm. that they they have taken a lot of liberties for a product that you pay for uh either yeah. when you buy a new or a new pc or you bought it before and they give you a quote-unquote free upgrade for a product that you pay for they then scrape a lot of data if you don't go into your well, settings that's, for that's sure. what i'm trying to say like that's the that's the trade-off that people used to make with paid software versus free software is that there was accountability at the source right mm-hmm. like we don't know who's doing LibreOffice. it could be the russians oh <laughs> always the russians the russians you know if the russians made it it'd be better software <laughs> Sorry, the Russians are pretty good at software. Let's be honest here. They're pretty good at it. A lot better than those Ukrainians. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There you go. 
but, but what I'm saying though is that I was talking to my friend. I said to myself, you know what? I, I just, sometimes I just want to go back to Mac. I just don't want to worry about this. Like, I don't want to worry about, about this. And you say to yourself, well, what are you worrying about if you didn't do anything wrong? Well, hear me out though. I'll make it real quick. <laughs> um, the fact of the matter is, is that things that are permissible now, like content, like there was a story that came out. You didn't, you didn't hear about it. I didn't even hear about it. Someone had to show it to me. Somebody was taking their Kindle to like, I forget some other country, um, not in, not, um, um, not England, like some other third world country. Yeah. And some of the content that they tried to redownload wasn't available because of geo locations. Yeah. Like the con the content because of rights restrictions, they weren't allowed to access the content they bought. And you say to yourself, well, well, I thought I bought this. I bought this book. No, no, no. You bought the license for the book. You bought the rights the of the book. Yeah. Yeah. And so what happens is with software, like you said a minute ago, oh, you know, Microsoft will give you a free upgrade, free upgrade, free upgrade. Look, I'm not going to say who. I don't want to get into it. But I got into a little bit of a Twitter spat the other day, right? <laughs> I know, I I know I shouldn't have. It was like it was late. Those are always productive, Nathan. You know that. Yes, and I I know better. So let me let me do my hazanas here. But I got into this Twitter spat because there's a bunch of um there, and I won't say who, but there was a very big, very powerful economics based website that does financials, right? Mm -hmm. And they and they decided to have a video game section, and they put out a little press thing that said, "Oh, here's the new free." PlayStation Plus games for the month. And the article goes into it. And he's like, oh, here are your free games that you get for PlayStation Plus. Oh, look at this. This is a full price, but but for free, you should play it. So naturally, I'm an idiot. I decided to go and tweet the author. And I said, look, dude, you're misusing the word free. PlayStation Plus is a free service. It's not a free service. Yeah. It's a paid service. I get excoriated. He sends his minions on me, calls me an idiot, like doubles down. Is like, no, it's context. And I was like, dude, no, literally, you said it's free. Like, it's not what free means. We have been, con uh, there's younger people have been conditioned to not value their own financial investments. You see this everywhere with credit cards. Oh, set up an auto payment. Just pay the minimum. You'll be paying it off till you die. You know, buy this. Oh, break it up into four payments. Ah, it's better than credit. Like we're being taught not to value our investments. You don't buy anything. You don't own anything. You're leasing it. You're leasing the license. You don't own anything. And, and with Windows, it's becoming so much more of that. It's that it's, it's becoming so conditional. So conditionally, I don't know what the conditions are because they can change them. They can change them tomorrow. They could change them right now. And they like to say, oh, we're going to do this. And your continued use of the platform indicates that you approve. But if you don't approve, if you stop using, you lose everything. There's no, so what's your investment? You're, you, you bought the programs, you bought all this, but if you don't continue to sort of sign your rights away, then you lose everything. That's there's that's coercion. There's many lawsuits, and I think there was a the latest one announced from the FTC about Apple and the ecosystem, and um, yeah, essentially throwing oh, up walled yes. gar the idea of walled gardens, uh, saying, and, and this is something that you know I, I remember you know for a long time on the show talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you start to integrate yourself into an ecosystem uh is it the apple ecosystem or is it the microsoft ecosystem is it the android ecosystem is it the you know google ecosystem like whatever one it is you're more likely to stick with and use the other products and you know they're starting to go after those as being anti-competitive um you know for obvious reasons because people should have the right to you know just because i have you know a certain kind of tv and a certain kind of digital assistant and you know it would work better with one not the other there's no reason they can't work well together the only reason is they want it not as competitive um, uh, and that's that's not good for consumers well kind of kind of actually that is very good for consumers if you're a particular type of consumer if you're a consumer that looks at the chaos of android and you say i want a system that does that has protections built in like for example if you go and buy a ford you know, Crapolo. I don't even know the cars anymore. A, a Buick part, whatever. I don't even know cars. Well, you just buy this basic $10,000 Kia or you buy a $30,000 BMW. The BMW has stipulations with it that the, the, the Kia doesn't have. For, you can't just bring it to, you, know, you can't just bring your BMW to any garage. You're, you have to bring it to a Buick. Uh, you know, you have to bring it to a yeah. BMW garage. You have to do this. And people say like, well, why, do, why would you pay more? Well, because I want that, I want that security knowing that I have this these options available. Now, does it cost more? It costs more, but I'm paying for that. So the question is, can you have a system like Apple, for example, iOS, has always sold itself as very secure. It's always sold itself as clamped down. It's never said it was anything but. 
It had a giant, a gigantic eco, uh, ecosystem that is a walled garden, but it's it's more like a walled forest. It's not really a garden. It's gigantic. And Apple takes a thirty percent cut with certain things. There's certain things that you know we could we could sem- argue semantics on, but no one c- could rightfully say. And this is why I, I I really wish you and I talked about this two weeks ago in that lawsuit when mm-hmm. they launched the lawsuit. The the government's going to have a very tough um, position, like just based on the basic facts of the matter that Apple is somehow stifling competition when a they are not they are not the dominant operating system even in mobile they a apple music is not the dominant music service apple uh, icloud is not the dominant this safari is not the dominant browser apple maps is not the dominant thing even on their own platform third party software is more successful than apple software the only thing they have that's as successful is iMessage and even iMessage is dwarfed by WhatsApp so the government is going to have a very interesting job uh, convincing a jury or a judge that Apple somehow stifles competition when they are not by any stretch of any definition on anybody's map, according to any case law, a monopoly. They don't. You have to be a dominant player. They're they're number two. They're, how do you how do you, how well, do you stifle competition? Number two is, is still dominant. You can still be dominant and be number two. There's only two. <laughs> yeah, they're number two. I, and but, yeah. but 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 again though is what have they stifled? They take a percentage cut, of course. This is all going back to the epics, you know, your in your state, epic games and all this, and you know, finding for this. But they did this with Apple Books years ago. Like the government suit said that Apple was engaging in anti-competitive practices. Again, I'm sorry. Do you know anybody who reads Apple Books? Everybody reads Kindle. Okay, Kindle controls 85% of the market. So how do, how does someone who controls less than 10% of a market able is able to conspire to conflate prices when books are thirty dollars on Apple and ten dollars on Kindle. It's 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 fascinating. But let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. What if you want to come up with a mail service? What if you decide I'm going to compete with the US Postal Service? I'm going to put mailboxes in everyone's house. You'd get in trouble. The government has a monopoly on postal service. They literally have a legal monopoly. You can't put third party packages inside your mailbox. It's against the law. FedEx can't do it. UPS can't tell that to FedEx and UPS because they do it here. But yeah, I I, I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, or cable companies. Cable companies have provisional monopolies that are somehow excluded from antitrust competitive things. So it's very, it's very interesting who who they pick are the leaders, whatever. The the and and really what we're getting at is uh, the idea of services versus you know kind of uh, yeah. um, essentially public services necessary services essential services versus like what is competition what is um you know just a a service that a company can sell you versus what is expected as a standard essential service um yeah and yeah. And, and i don't think we're gonna chase this uh this down too much further oh, yeah I'm, I'm not even that con- i'm not even that knowledgeable on it yeah. i'm just i'm doing superficial arguments no here, no, no 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 and, and and you're absolutely right i am looking forward to um to what the u.s government has to say about apple because nathan i don't know it just feels like you need that gut check you need those those you know kind of reassessments every couple of years to be like yeah they're a three trillion dollar company but is it unwarranted is it anti-competitive is microsoft doing too much is apple doing too much is you know is google doing too much Uh, like you know once in a while just going in and just kind of taking an assessment I don't see anything wrong with that. And if that has to play I mean, out in I, court, you know, hey, there you go. Lucky lawyers. Well, again, I'm, I'm not rooting for Apple, right? I'm rooting against false information. Like, mm-hmm. Apple frustrates me so much. And when I mention going back to Mac OS, I say it in jest. I love Windows 11. But the, but the fact of the matter is I am getting a little tired of having to wonder how much of my privacy is being shared without my consent like, or, or my implicit consent. Well, it's, you, have you ever read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Yes. Like Douglas Adams? Of course. You remember the very first the very first book, you know, his house, Arthur Dent's, his house is being destroyed, and they come out like, oh, we left you a notice. Well, where is it? Oh, it's downtown. Well, where downtown? Oh, it's on the basement yes. level, in, in a locked room, in a, in a shut cabinet. Well, it's like you shouldn't have to do a scavenger hunt to protect your privacy. And there's no way on earth that the average person is going to know to to do that you know that fetch quest to go and hit every toggle to protect their privacy and I and I will give Apple some credit they don't play that game mm-hmm. they don't have any of that crap on a Mac OS there's literally nothing on Mac OS that's even comparable to sort of the data the data mining that Apple that yeah. you know that um, Windows yep. does. but again I do like Windows 11 I like it a lot I just wish 
know, please well, hands off. Speaking of which, and all of this yeah. actually does tie into another story that you had linked, which is Intel Microsoft discussed plans to run Copilot mm-hmm. locally, so not server based like you were talking about before, but locally mm-hmm. on PCs instead of the cloud. And that part is, uh, you know, could be, you know, could be fun because, of course, then you don't have to uh, worry about the data stream and worry about your information getting out, like whatever your AI on your computer is. But of course, it's being updated and checked against, um, you know, the one that's updated over at Microsoft. So it's like it's run locally, but it really what that means is it's still Microsoft's chatbot, like it's still their copilot. But now, hey, fun, fun. They're, they get to use your system resources, your electricity, your yeah. hardware to I, do what they want to do. I'm probably going to miscategorize this, right? I'm probably going to miscategorize this completely. So I apologize for anybody. I'm stupid. But I know this resu- this is um, this is more in lines with what they call NPUs, like neural processing units. Mm-hmm. And I know at the CES this year, Herman and, and you and I talked about this, about how they had AI accelerator chips that are basically just add-on chips. So a good analogy would be like, you know, 15 years ago, your PC didn't have Wi-Fi. You buy a Wi-Fi card, now you got Wi-Fi. Well, you want your PC to have AI? Buy an AI card, do it. Why you can't use GPUs to do this? I don't know. Can you? Can you just use your GPU to do this? Or are you going to need an extra chip on top of that? Um, and, and that's, uh, well, we've seen with NVIDIA, all of their new graphics cards, which, you know, as someone who plays a lot of video games and, you know, I enjoy, you do, huh? I, I enjoy like the, the, uh, the powerful, robust graphics cards for, you know, enhanced graphics. But every time NVIDIA has come out with an announcement in the past, like 18 months, it's been, oh, we're making something more optimized for AI. AI. So you oh. could do it with your GPU and don't, and don't get me wrong. Any GPU that comes out in the future will be better at AI than any past GPUs. But yeah, there will be additional can, hardware to run AI as can, well. Can can we say this real quick though? Um, when we talk about NPUs, we talk about this sort of thing. Like you know, you can render like Donkey Balls in Baldur's <laughs> Gate three at mm-hmm. you know you know 4K resolutions at 160 hertz, but you can't do Grandma's recipes. But but the fact of the matter is is that um, how do I say this without sounding like a complete tool? It kind of reminds me of when they had shared computing power years ago when companies would like, hey, can we borrow a portion of your PC? You download a little program and therefore, you know, we we use like, like the power SETI of, like, project, for instance. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I'm wondering, and again, I'm not getting a clear answer on this, that if you suddenly sort of pollinate these AI cards across desktop PCs, will they not be collectively adding to some overall AI presence that simple network farms could not do like Mm. to me it seems like that's the best way to do ai is that you literally have to make use of a better sampling and and not to be a conspiracy theorist here but wouldn't the best sample of what actual ai would be would be the user like interactions as opposed to just data sets like data sets are are what people did yesterday or it's activities that people have done or it's activity or in some cases like google it's corrupted data like okay we'll just scratch this out we don't need those white people but it's like if they if they read your computer and my computer then they're going to get a more accurate example of what actual human beings are doing and by the way they do this already they already do this already on your cell phone if you go to you know this if you go to walmart they use Bluetooth to track what aisle you're in. They know exactly like oh, they know the, your the path, and they're able to kind yeah. of say that you know our customers are tending to go right back mm-hmm. to this section, so place things here to do this. Exactly. Yes. They they have uh, not to scare anybody, but you have zero privacy when you go to a store that uses like oh the free Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth. Like they know they know every time you scratch your butt. Mm-hmm. You know you know the only thing they don't know is like like you know, how much protein in your diet at the stool. They might <laughs> they might even do that at some point. Like it's all about data. Data is the gold mine. Yep. And and I say I only say that because I'm pretty sure if they if they told people this is the way it's gonna be, they okay, just do it. Just take my data. You know, just do it. Yeah. And I I think that this like what Microsoft and Intel are kind of pushing with this, um like I'm I'm actually all for like I don't know. My biggest pet peeve with AI right now is that you can build these models, and right now, because you have to use uh, essentially their uh, their hardware, their resources, you have to pay you know ten cents every time you you do a query to mm-hmm. AI or whatever. Uh, I would love if these models were you know just like you know uh, I, I was about to say Microsoft Word, but you pay for that. But 
you know, something that's more free and democratized, and you can just use it to your heart's content, which some of it already is, well, but yeah. Well, I again, know. I mean, we're, you're talking like um, paid OS versus open source Linux. Yeah. Like the idea is that you pay for you pay for Windows or you pay for Mac, whatever. You know, you, you you're bound by a, a a contract. You know, PCs are more. I don't even know if PCs use serial numbers. I, mean, I don't think they do, right? I don't. I I can't remember the last time I had a um, you know. A license key, <laughs> but but the fact of the matter is is that you know the the trade off is is that you're part of the collective, you right. know you're part. That's the trade off. Like every time you use Google search, every time you use Twitter, you're adding to the collective of data of your usage statistics, right? Like so, don't act surprised when you see like like bulgy men's underwear like on your Amazon search because you looked up underwear. You know, <laughs> oh look at that, or I don't know where that came from. But the fact but the fact of the matter is is that. I go back to my typewriter, for example. My typewriter, I bought the typewriter. You only, I'm only limited by the paper and the ink. And mm -hmm. you buy Microsoft Word or you get a license and you could, you could do all you want. You remember HP had this scheme. Did you see about this like a month ago where they were going to start uh, doing subscription services to printers? And yeah. you were going to get like, yeah, and you can only get so many print. And then, but that's stupid. If you do that, you are dumb as hell. Yeah. But the thing that got me was that, you know, again, written in the, the EULL somewhere, somebody found it because some people are good at this, that everything you print from their service belongs to them. Every photo, you give, you give unlimited rights to use. Everything. PDFs, Word documents, everything. And it's just like, we have become so lackadaisic about our privacy. Despite what Matthew McConaughey, has, uh, McConaughey was saying about data being the new Wild West. I know, I know. Yeah. Well, I just, like I said, I, I'm not a Luddite, but I'll say this in final thoughts on this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, Henry Ford used, you know, he used to really dismiss what customers wanted. He was more in terms of like, what do I want? What would I build? You know, he used to famously said like a racehorse, a camel, right? A camel is a racehorse designed by a committee. Like if <laughs> I only listen to what customers want, I get a faster horse. So what I'm thinking is the more these tools, the AI tools become accessible, the more type digital typewriters get into the hands of people like me. The tools get into the hands of people like me. The graphic designs get into the hands of people like me. I don't think we're just going to have better, I don't think we're going to have fancier CG. I think we're looking at a new type of content that's going to emerge from this the way we haven't ever seen before. The same way like people, like kids in the ghetto back in the 70s that had never gone to Juilliard or whatever suddenly had instruments and they created hip hop out of it, right? Like we're looking at people who have are, are now going to be empowered in a way, and it's going to create this rush of influx of technology and creativity like that we haven't seen. And I don't know what it's going to look like. Maybe oh. TikTok <laughs> is a little a little taste of that because there's some wild stuff on TikTok. Yeah, like for all the bad bleach eating garbage, there's some really talented things going on there. Some really yeah. interesting things. I I, I am curious because AI really does seem to elevate the bottom. It it, it raises the floor more so than um, yeah. you know lowers it's in the that ceiling. Positive. Yeah. It's a net positive. Yep. So, okay. So, AI, all that good stuff. Uh, let's yeah. let's switch to something a little bit easier to talk about, and uh, let's go all the way back to Hulu on Disney Plus. And Yay. a lot of people out there may have uh, may have noticed if you watch Disney Plus, there's like a whole uh, section of Hulu, and it's like so you know, and spent, and you might be one of those people that pay for like that bundle, like the Hulu plus I Disney. I got I got the bundle. I I'll be honest with you, I don't watch Disney Plus. I yeah. am bored to tears. So, yeah. So if you get the bundle, by the way, like Hulu's become very interesting. Hulu's become very, they have a lot of good stuff there. They're not my favorite streaming channel. My favorite is still Paramount Plus. Mm -hmm. I like Shogun's a great show. There's a lot of really interesting stuff there. And um, this is just synergy. This is what happens when you own two things and it took you long enough to <laughs> merge them together. So. Well, Hulu had this weird, um, you know, kind of Fox and Disney and Hulu itself. And I think it was like NBC or something like that. Uh, there was like a 30, 30, 30, 10 split. Yeah, so no one really owned everything. But then Disney is just like, I don't know, slowly just started absorbing everything else mm -hmm. that Hulu, you know, uh, every other company that Hulu had and then of course i think nbc sold and they, hulu they became out. they bought out their portion yeah yeah and and so hulu became essentially 100 percent disney but still a separate service so is this article talking about you know it's just 
Hulu is going to be gone and it's going to be a subcategory within Disney or what's happening? I mean, that's that's inevitable. I mean, that's what's going to happen. The problem is right now is that Disney Plus and Hulu are different subscription services. And there's probably that's probably because that Hulu has legacy uh, affiliations yeah. with certain like, um, you know, content providers. Again, Disney owns most of them, but that Disney owning Fox has nothing to do with the contracts like Fox still operates as an independent company inside Disney. Right. Or oh, sorry, not even Fox anymore. They removed the name yeah. 20th Century Television or whatever. But the fact is that Disney's the parent company. But no, they like rights management is everything with these people. You know this. It's why they went. It's why they went on strike. It's all about this. It's all about like streaming. Like if I make a show on Fox Terrestrial TV, how many people are going to watch it? I get paid on that model. But if the show suddenly plops onto streaming and it gets 20 billion people watching it, you don't get anything. Right. You know. And and you saw this effect. This this sort of um, monkey's paw like. Uh, <laughs> wish fulfillment, like with shows like Breaking Bad, a Breaking Bad, a show that everyone and their brother said that was the greatest show on earth, but no one watched it until it came to Netflix. And then it exploded, like um, that it became one of the most beloved shows of all time because it was on a platform that people could actually watch it. The problem is Brian Cranston and Aaron, Aaron Paul didn't get anything from it because they didn't have any contracts in place for it. Mm -hmm. It's not television, you know, and um, but I'll say this. Some of these streaming services, I know Amazon just did this too. They'll say, "Oh, it's ad free," but they'll put ads on it. Like a lot of them will have ads before. They'll, 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 they'll and then they'll have a little asterisk that said, "Ad free, except some content because of you know licensing and everything." Like it'll still have ads sometimes, but that's they want more money, and that's the problem. Right. Um, the you know, but again, I don't think Hulu. I don't think <sighs> I haven't heard of any. Any, I don't even heard of Hulu producing like billion dollar TV shows. They're pretty good with their budgets, all things considered. Unlike Amazon and Netflix. Yeah, I, I mean there there is stuff to watch on on Disney Plus, um, but by and large, like you go on there like once a month and find one thing worth watching. Uh, there's not like you know a constant stream of you know Netflix like programming where you're like okay yeah there's something new every single day uh, it's all garbage but you know there's something new that's uh, that's cool um, I I wonder how long it's going to be before you Hulu gets rebranded as Disney Plus Plus so Disney Plus will be your basic and then your Disney Plus Plus will be all your Hulu content um, they're going to get folded into each other. I'm sure that Hulu's budget for advertising, um, you know, even from like five years ago, is next to zero because Disney mm. is pushing Disney Plus, well, and they're going to wait for Hulu to wither and die and then well, absorb it. For all their problems, Disney's a much smarter company than things like Warner Brothers. Like Warner Brothers did, like, doesn't have anybody working in that company that understands branding. Like, you know, with what they did to their apps, like, and the fact that they... Oh, I thought you were going to say something about HBO Max and how they're just calling it Max for some stupid well, that's reason. That's what I'm saying. Like, they, they literally took the marquee logo out of their app. They That would be like Disney Plus just calling themselves Plus. Yeah. Like, you're missing the point. Like, HBO is the selling point. People like HBO. They love HBO. Mm -hmm. And now it's just called Max. What is it? Cinemax? <laughs> where's, all the, where's all the sex movies? Yeah. I'm disappointed. But the fact is, is that you get Hulu... Hulu's a brand for better or for worse. Hulu's got got some cachet with that, and they've done okay. They've they've never been spectacular, but they've never been garbage. They've yeah. always just they you want to watch Family Guy, you want to watch Bob's Burgers, you want to watch you know whatever. Hulu's got a lot of stuff like they're they've always occupied that middle ground. Like I, like Hulu is like I I don't know about streaming. I'm curious. I'm gonna dip my toe into hulu hulu no. to me was like where netflix was trailblazing they came in they revolutionized the market they picked up old shows that no one cared about for a cheap price and everyone watched mm -hmm. a, a, a billion hours of it and then mm -hmm. hulu was like every incumbent cable channel uh banding yeah. together saying exactly. okay we need to put something online people are watching That's online like we need coalition. to have yeah. and it wasn't as competitive in, as netflix but it had content so yeah. It had content that people recognized, like yeah. like certain types of people. And again, I, I tell you, my favorite streaming channel is Paramount. Mm -hmm. I understand why people don't don't agree with me, but th there's content on Paramount, you know, that goes back 60, 70 years from TV shows. Like, uh, yeah, you probably don't want to watch Gunsmoke, <laughs> but somebody likes Gunsmoke. Me, yeah. I am. I told you, I am. I am making my way through Hawaii Five O. Right? Like, I it's taken me six years, but I'm almost through that show. <laughs> but, but, but I don't. It's not. It's not appointment television. I don't. Need, it's not going anywhere. It's there. It's all there. But then again, all the Star Treks are there. Beavis and Butthead is there. 
you know, there's a lot of really fun stuff there on Paramount. Yeah, and they, they have some movies. They're mostly bad. Like, there's nothing prestigious like um, like Shogun, but mm-hmm. they got Top Gun. You know, I know Top Gun. But, but you know, but for people who invest a lot of money, you're not saving any money when you buy all these streaming services. You're spending way more money than you would with cable. Yep. You know, so... so. So, so let's see. So existing bundle customers can hop into Hulu shows using the tab. Okay, so uh, because I remember this happening uh, a couple of months ago, they had a beta in November, and mm-hmm. now it's just everyone gets it. It's out of beta. And if you want to watch Hulu programming on Disney+, Plus, there you can just go to I, the subcategory. I, I imagine it's kind of like Amazon Prime. Like yeah. You look at Prime, and it has all those add-on like showtime or whatever like yeah oh this is only available so i imagine it's just you're unlocking tiers okay but but honestly it's a honestly if you watch a lot if you watch disney plus or hulu honestly it's it's such a stupidly good deal like you pay like 18 bucks a month and you get both like it's literally like 75 percent off like it's you get both right just do that you know and, and and not to skip story number two but i do want to say that you have here in the miscellaneous uh, and this is one that i was wondering uh out loud uh, just a couple of days ago <laughs> when i saw this because we, we went to go see dune 2 which uh-huh. was great and Everybody then loves it. Uh, i'm sorry what Everybody loves Dune too. Yeah. Oh, it, it, phenomenal, phenomenal. Like it's not often that you have to wait three years for a movie and it's worth it. It's uh, it's a nice change of pace. But anyways, one of the best um, previews was for Godzilla and, and Kong. Uh, mm-hmm. And was it Godzilla Kong: The New Empire? Um, yeah. So you have this in the miscellaneous. I was wondering uh, because I I'd not see any of the recent Godzillas. Haven't seen any of the recent Skull Island, Kong, whatever maybe. Um, and honestly, Nathan, I saw two giant monsters punching each other and then punching other things together. And I was like, am I going to miss too much backstory? Can I just jump right into this movie or nope. do I need to catch up? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think you could just jump in. But I'll, I'll say this. Um, I, as a lifelong Godzilla fan, free keyboard, right? Mm-hmm. Lifelong Godzilla fan since cradle to, cradle to the grave. I'll be a Godzilla fan forever. I We are spoiled for Godzilla content these days. And... Uh, we did a movie podcast, I told you, where we rated our best films. And and no surprise, Godzilla Minus One was my favorite film of 2023. And I don't give a crap about the Oscars, but it was funny to me noting that the single like most watched thing at the Oscars this year was the fact that Godzilla Minus One won an Academy Award, right, for best special effects. And they would come and the guys came up there and they, in their pigeon English, they talked, they were holding Godzilla toys. And just, it's such a celebration of cinema of what it is. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't make any sense. Why do people like this giant lizard monster <laughs> crunching on their city? We don't know. He's so relatable. It. He's me if I were a giant lizard. But Godzilla Minus One is a self contained film. It's kind of like a reboot of, reboot of the first. It is a serious film. It is actually a film with a, you know, Martin Scorsese. This is cinema, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody loves this movie. Everybody celebrated this movie. And then you get this. Then you get Godzilla versus Kong, what, the new whatever. And it's cinematic popcorn. It's it's all spectacle. Like it's, I guarantee you, you're not going to remember 20 minutes of the humans when you come out of it. But you are getting eyeball candy. You are getting giant lizard, giant monkey cities. Like, have, did you see the last? Did you not see the last one, Godzilla versus Kong? The, just uh, n- no. visually spectacular. No, like, I, I, honestly, I've not seen it. Yeah, you could see the monsters. They're not cloaked in darkness. They're bright things. The story is dumb. It is stupid. They go into the center of the earth. King Kong's been hanging out at the lost city of Atlantis. King Kong gets a mighty axe. None of it makes sense. It's dumb as hell. But it's if you know the Godzilla franchise, you know this franchise gets really stupid sometimes. <laughs> really dumb. And it's like, well... I, what are you expecting? Yeah. Like, what do people expect? Like, you're literally getting exactly what you're paying for and nothing more. And you know what? This franchise has been around, what, 70 years? It's something's working. Something's working. When they started making these movies, the Lone Ranger was on TV. Zorro, right? Yeah. Like, nobody's celebrating any of that crap now. It's Godzilla. It's monsters. It's action. Will the movie be great? I don't care. I've, I, I survived the 70s. I've seen some... I've seen such stupidity in the Godzilla movies. Like, if you actually go down the list, giant simian aliens transforming skeletons into robots and, and flower monsters, and it just it's, it gets really stupid. Mm-hmm. And you know what? It works. It contains multitudes, right? And you can't say that about any other franchise that, that can occupy 
two different spaces so evenly, the closest you've ever come, the closest you've ever come to Godzilla would be James Bond, another long-lasting franchise that eventually has to reborn itself. Now, sometimes it's silly and stupid with gadgets and gizmos and, you know, supervillains, and sometimes it's really serious. It could be both. Yeah, be I, I, I mean, I don't think... It- what what I would be concerned more is not is it serious is it silly whatever, but is it good? And from what I'm picking up, you know, for for you, it uh, it sounds like it's well, a good. I haven't fun time. seen the new one. I haven't seen the new one, but I'll say this: when we were in the pandemic, Godzilla vs King Kong was one of the very first movies that they were doing the day to day, you know, streaming in, in theaters. Mm-hmm. To this day, it still holds the record for the highest grossing movie to be on streaming. Like it, it beat Dune. It beat everything. Right. And I got to tell you something. Um, I forget who it was. Uh, was it MSI or it's it's one of those companies that makes monitors? Mm-hmm. Um, they still use Godzilla versus King Kong as their like HDR testing because <laughs> because in fact we've done it too at Pop Zara where the they they produce this 4K HDR trailer for Godzilla versus King Kong. Yeah, and it is spectacularly stupid. The visuals are so good and so colorful. Like they're fighting in Shanghai or, or Singapore, and it's and the colors are so good. Like if you watch the trailer for this new one, they do the same thing. Like why is Godzilla pink? I don't know, but he's pink and it looks great. But it's so colorful, and it's what we call in the testing world, Ben, um, testing media. Like like when we test TVs and we test Blu-rays and everything, right. you want certain media that that brings out the best. Like in full disclosure, two of the movies that we use to test are Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, right? Because you will not find a better movie with better reds and blacks in the same movie. You just won't. Yeah. And when Godzilla vs. Kong, because again, it's 4K, you know, li- live action, whatever. But it's so colorful. The HDR is so well made on this film. It's the best HDR I've ever seen in a film. And I'm hoping, and if this new one is as good as the last one, okay, but I'm not going in expecting much of a story. Right. I mean, honestly, I could, I could barely follow the trailer. I don't know what's going on. Why does he have a Thanos club? I don't know. <laughs> but but honestly, like, who cares? Yeah, I, I'm 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 hoping it'll be good. And uh, one of those movies that you know, I normally I would say I, I'll, I'll wait till it's on streaming. But this seems like a movie that I'd say is theaters. so colorful and so big and probably loud. It has a yeah. great soundscape. Uh, it might be worth going to the theater for you know for the experience. Can I, can I also just end it with this as my joyous celebration of monsters? Um, I had a lot of fun watching a lot of the reactions to Godzilla minus one winning an Oscar. I, I want to bring that up. Like the producers of the film itself, they had toys. There is something so special about people rallying around. Like we we hear fandom is toxic, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, fandom is toxic. Isn't that? There is no toxicity in the Godzilla fandom. There is. They managed something right. Boys, girls, black, white, Asians, Westerners. You got it. it is, the tent is large. No, there's no hatred everybody's celebrating it and there was such this euphoria of people like just celebrating a giant monster lizard movie <laughs> like and there's just something so perfect about that mm-hmm. like, like is that is that is godzilla our savior will he bring us all together wasn't and, that al- wasn't that always the the subplot so I, I think with that, Nathan, uh, we're actually going to wrap it up. We're going to skip uh, that Twitch story. Uh, for those who didn't catch it, Twitch is uh, uh, for prolonged camera angles where you showed intimate body parts. Uh, <laughs> I guess they eventually had enough. And uh, uh, boob, boob streamers, <laughs> butt streamers, crotch streamers, whoever you may be. Uh, Can I say good, something? Good luck finding the next meta because it will uh, shift. It will adapt. It will change. It's a game of uh, cat and mouse. And uh, yeah, you know, there will be something next. It. But yeah, please. I'll, I'll just say this. It's, it's, it's the Twitch version of Doom. Like, will it play Doom? Well, in Twitch... Can you project on it? And so, let's just say some of the Twitch users have more amplitude to pr- for projection yeah. than others. Yeah. So uh, the, some I some don't. some Twitch uh, streamers are yeah. definitely plugging more than their Twitch channel. It's uh, uh, links below. Okay. So with that yeah. being said, <laughs> everyone, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, Nathan, if you want to tell the next folks r- real quick, uh, you know what are some of the highlights you mentioned? Uh, you have a podcast, sure. of course, with movies and video games. Uh, what's going on over at Popzar? Well, it changes daily, doesn't it? Like, um, we got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, up-to-date movie reviews. I know we have uh, King Kong, uh, sorry, Godzilla vs. Kong review c- coming up at some point. Nice. Uh, review of the new Le- 
Luc Besson movie. I think it's called Dogman coming out at some point. Lots of cool stuff. I will say this. It's going into summer, so dynamics change a little bit. But honestly, it's not anything you won't find somewhere else. It's just with us. It's our particular brand of seasoning. There you go. Perfect. So with that being said, and uh, everyone, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, thank you, Nathan, for uh, making this happen. It's always a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I hope everyone out there enjoyed it as well. ComputerAmerica.com will have everything, including show notes, all the articles, everything that we talked about. Uh, The conversation was meandering, so we're going to do our best. But everything should be there. So, Nathan, until next month, I want to thank you so much and thank everyone out there for tuning in. So, until next time, have a great day. Thank you so much. And, hey, maybe go watch Godzilla and Kong. Have a good one. Catch you then. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.